In this video, I'm turning all of your worst fears into Lego. You guys gave me a ton of ideas that we have to get through, so strap in as we take an adventure down this highway of terror. Our first stop is at the carnival. Having fun, eating snacks, playing games, performing clowns that totally don't want to kill you. So yeah, this carnival is totally cursed. I made this entryway that leads in through the clown's mouth with these Lego teeth pieces, and the eyebrows use these weird bendy ones. The next thing I whipped up was this killer clown ferris wheel. It perfectly fits minifigures, and is actually really satisfying. As they spin around, they get slowly cooked by these hot coals, or you can just launch them. I also added in these lights on each side. You'll find a bunch of creeper dudes wearing these costumes terrorizing the guests. I based those off of old Disney and Halloween costumes that are really unsettling. I added in a lot of other spooky minifigures to be workers around the carnival, like this guy who has a huge head and this guy with hair growing all over his body. I added this barrel where you can bob for apples. There's also this BB shooter game that uses these pieces for targets and has these flags hanging around the top of it. On the prize rack, I added in a bunch of bizarre and disgusting prizes that no one would actually want. I still think we can make our carnival creepier, so I have these lights we're going to set up to give it a spookier vibe. Overall, that helps set the scene way better and makes it feel more like a real carnival at night. And with that, we've completed our killer clown carnival, so let's move on. Another instinctual fear that so many people can relate to is being scared of the dark, not knowing what's creeping around you. So with that, I set up this bedroom, since that's where so many of us can relate to this fear, worried that something is about to invade our place of safety. The bedroom has a bed, of course, that you can modify with these curved pieces to make it look like the minifigure is tucked in. I added this dresser, a rug, a toy chest, and some other decorations. Any little noise or tap from the closet or under your bed can make you totally freaked out. Huh? So I built up this monstrous hand using these cool pieces that has red fingers and white claws. It's coming up from under the bed, ready to pull you down with it. I added this monster inside of the closet. Every time you're almost asleep, you begin to hear his claws slowly digging against the door. Out in the hallway, I added in this spooky old portrait, as well as this girl with scars on the back of her head and black <laughs> hair in front of her face like the ones from scary movies. The monster under the bed design was partially inspired by the Goosebumps cover, Don't Go to Sleep, which I'll probably recreate in a future Goosebumps episode. Now I'm not sure about everyone else, but when I was a kid, I was constantly scared of getting kidnapped. And what better build for that than this creeper van that's disguised as an ice cream truck. It's like one of those that say free candy on it. I mixed in these orangey parts to make the van look rusted and dirty, and the driver just looks like the kind of guy that would end up being a kidnapper. He drives around Lego City playing his ice cream music, trying to lure the kids out. But if you listen closely, you'll hear the clinking chain dragging behind it. The van has other details like these mirrors, doors, a creepy license plate, this hatch, and this removable roof. Inside, you'll find this disgusting cooler where he keeps the ice cream, as well as this gel cell in the back. <laughs> For our next build, we have one featuring a legendary monster, Slenderman. Specifically, I'm basing this build off of the game Slender the Eight Pages. The Slenderman minifigure is made using these spiky pieces that clip onto his back. I then built up the forest where the game takes place and sprinkled in a ton of these grass pieces to give it some texture, as well as these other plant pieces. The player is using Shaggy's hair that I thought would be really fitting, and he also has this flashlight. I sprinkled in some of these cool trees that have adjustable branches, and then added in a couple of the pages that the player has to collect. Overall, it's a simple build, but one that looks pretty good. Now back in my day, the premier show to watch for all things creepy was Fear Factor, where guests would have to perform stunts, eat gross stuff like bugs, and complete other frightening tasks in order to win. The show was hosted by Joe Rogan. If you want to make the podcast version of him, pop off his hair and add some headphones. So Jamie, see if we can pull up. A ton of you said you were terrified of spiders and snakes, so I figured we better incorporate those into this challenge. I started by setting up this glass cage that would hold the contestants, but before going in, they have to spin the wheel, determining if they'll be surrounded by spiders, snakes, scorpions or parasites. They'll be locked up and chained inside with a key that they'll have to use to free themselves before giving into their fears and going totally insane. The fastest person out wins the $50,000. So Amanda's up first, let's spin the wheel. Looks like it's gonna be snakes. Oh no, snakes are the worst. Well, unfortunately, Amanda's disqualified. Timmy's up next, so spiders for Timmy. Oh man, it looks like he's gonna do it. Time! <laughs> 
Our next fear is not one that happens in real life, but confronts us in our dreams. So one day Johnny is just sitting in class, minding his own business, trying not to be recognized by the other students or his crush, when all of a sudden he has no clothes. He lurches up and out of the classroom, dashing down to his locker, but unfortunately it's empty too. So showing up somewhere without clothes is a fear that I think most people have dreamed about at some point in their life. So I wanted to recreate it here with this classroom build. In it, you'll find details like this school mascot poster and rules, as well as this whiteboard and the American flag hanging up for the kids to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Now another fear a ton of you all said was claustrophobia, otherwise known as the fear of being stuck in a small cramped space, and specifically, some mentioned being buried alive. So that's our next build. So just imagine, you're having a great day riding your bike around Lego City, when all of a sudden a creeper van comes out of nowhere and runs you over. You hit your head on the concrete, completely knocking you out. You're rushed off to the hospital, but unfortunately you're declared dead because there was a hiccup in the machine. And to make it worse, your history buff dad recently found out about his Egyptian heritage, so they decide to bury you like a wrapped up ancient mummy. For the build, I started by setting up this rocky foundational layer. I then made this coffin, which at first didn't feel tight enough, so I went ahead and made it even tighter. Inside it, you can barely even move because there's absolutely no room, and you're wrapped up like a mummy. On top of the ground, all that's left of you is a tombstone. So good luck digging yourself out of this one. So the moral of the story is wear your helmet, kids. And I also set up this underground cave just for fun with this troll hanging out eating some chicken. Deep dark water is another common fear, not knowing what's lurking beneath the surface, making people feel vulnerable. So that's next. I started by building up the ocean floor with these dark tan bricks and a variety of plant life. I also added in some sea creatures like these fish, a crab, and a turtle. I used these clear pieces to set up the ocean's water where the minifigures could surf around. I had to leave this opening in the center to fit the sinking minifigure, and it's actually really satisfying. So too bad for Finn because these are deadly infested waters with hungry sharks and other monsters, and most likely he's never going to surf again. If you've been to certain corners of YouTube over the past couple of years, you've likely heard of liminal spaces. They're nostalgic, ordinary locations that are so plain and barren without any signs of life that they end up looking quite bizarre and can even be considered unsettling. One series that has popularized this look is the back rooms, which I've recreated here. I built these isolated, textureless hallways by using Lego bricks on their sides, and they seem to lead nowhere. At one end, you'll find this hole dropping down to an empty living room that's just as barren, with a staircase rising into the dark. For our minifigure, we have the guy with the camera from the original video. I also made the backroom's monster out of all of these black clip pieces, and it uses a camera for the head. In the series, you don't really get a clear look at the monster, so I did my best to capture the basic looks of him that you can see. So another thing I was always afraid of was getting lost because I got lost in Walmart like five times. There was just so much to be distracted by. Awesome toys, colorful cereal boxes, lobsters, those video game demo stations that would strain your neck from having to look up for too long. It was just too much for my kid brain to take in. So for this build, I set up these aisles that are packed to the brim with all sorts of stuff like food, cell phones, toys, and other junk. I even made one of those game demo stations. And here's this kid who's just realized he's lost. He's surrounded by a bunch of other ordinary shoppers, but the problem problem is, everything is way scarier when you're a kid who's just realized he's lost. And now he's thinking a creeper is going to jump out of nowhere, grab him, and throw him in the back of a van. However, his mom is probably just actually on the next aisle over, and he's fine. In the comments, let me know your greatest fears, and until next time, see you later.